And in terms of today, well, we've got two of the very best strikers in the division on the pitch today. So it's only fair that we have a few goals in the commentary box as well. 144 goals between them. I'll leave you to figure out the split between Aaron McLean and Dan Mason. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. Afternoon, everyone. The last eight days shows just how quickly things can change in the National League. Eastleigh utterly dejected after their Ebbs fleet thrashing, but big winners under new management just three days later. Bromley beating the runaway leaders last Saturday, only to be pegged back in frustrating circumstances on Tuesday. That's the National League, and that's why we love it. Uh, given their 5-2 win on Tuesday, it's no surprise to see an unchanged Eastleigh side. Uh, they play with three central defenders at Oxford, with Oscar Rutherford and Ben Reeves very influential on the wings. Up front, it's Scott Quigley and National League top scorer Paul McCallum, who on Tuesday scored his first goal in five matches. Andy Woodman threatened to ring the changes after Tuesday's draw with Daggers, but there's just the one in the end. Josh Pashley returns at the expense of Jude Arthurs, who is not in the squad. Plenty of goals in this side with Corey Whiteley, Ben Crowhouse and Louis Dennis around, not to mention Michael Cheek, who has six goals in his last four games. So, a first home game for Eastleigh under Kelvin Davis, who only had one proper training session before Tuesday's big win at Oxford City. Another rapid turnaround for the Spitfires, and in more ways than one. Well, I think this game will definitely guarantee us goals, you know, with some outstanding goal scorers on the pitch. And some loose defending, you must have to say, for, for uh, Eastleigh, but I expect it to be two teams really going at it. Cheek finding Pashley. Just getting a, a feel of the ball early doors. Now, here's Whiteley. Good early ball across, looking for Dennis. They're queuing up here. And a very important piece of defending by Fran Gillette. And it's best Topoloy let fly. Well, again, it's that run into that right-hand channel. This time it's Corey Whiteley that gets in there. And Topolai will get forward. He will make sure that he's up on that left-hand side and, and given the opportunity, he will get shots at goal. So Bromley already starting to ask questions of that, that defence of Eastleigh. Grant and Alex Kirk forward. Callum Reynolds up there too. Wanted short for Bromley. Deflection on the shot and only just wide in the end. Louis Dennis trying his luck. That deflection could have taken it anywhere. Well, it's a really well-worked corner. They find Louis Dennis, who's free, and he's, he's shot. I think it, it possibly comes off of his own teammate in the end. I'm sure he won't be happy about it, a, a man who's had a, an amazing career, but at 35 years old now, you know, I think he'll understand. Taylor's ball across, quickly couldn't get ahead on it. Tackling away, though, the full-back, and coming away with possession when he had no right to win it. It's Taylor's shot. It's uh, safely gathered or not safely gathered by Smith. He seemed to have it, but then suddenly lost it. McCallum was right onto it. And that was a very worrying moment for Bromley and their goalkeeper, Grant Smith. And it's Taylor with a strike. He's obviously scored it in midweek. But he spills the first one. He's able to, to dive down at, at McCallum's feet and, and keep the second one out. Unfortunately for McCallum, he's not able to, to make anything of it, but finally asking some questions, you know, and if, if he's going to take a mistake from a goalkeeper or a defensive error, I'm, I'm sure they'll be more than happy with that, but a little bit of extra right at the end of the first half. Now with Paul McCallum and Michael Cheek and Bez Chopaloy and others around, we had the A-list cast on display today, but so far we haven't had much of a script. No goals in the first half here, although Grant Smith's error right on the half-time whistle almost brought Eastleigh a shot lead. Going into the break, though, it's Eastleigh nil, Bromley nil. It's not going to get any easier, though, for the Spitfires. Bromley scored all four of their goals against Chesterfield last week in the second half of that game. And certainly the way that the Ravens have played so far, you feel that they have plenty in reserve, Aaron. 
Smith looks long towards Michael Cheek, who won the header. And here is Corey Whiteley. Couldn't quite squeeze it past McDonald. And Bromley with their best chance of the game inside 90 seconds at the start of the second half. Either Louis Dennis or Corey Whiteley running in beyond Michael Cheek. It's a lovely little ball from Dennis. Corey Whiteley, the angle's tight, but he looks to try and go across McDonald. And McDonald manages to stick a leg out, make a good save, and the defenders are quick enough to be able to, to mop up for him. But good intent from Bromley. Rutherford quickly was trying to stay on side. Cross never reached him in any case. That one's towards McCallum, who's there. Oh, the goalkeeper almost spilled it. Reeves is shot. Reynolds was in the way. And that was another nervy moment for Grant Smith, who experienced problems toward the end of the first half. Here he made a bit of a meal of that header. Well, it's a great little diagonal ball into McCallum. McCallum does the right thing in heading it down, but Grant Smith just makes a mess of it, parries it back out into the middle of the goal, and that could have easily ended up in the back of his net. A shaky end to the first half, and you've got to say, a shaky start to the beginning of the second. Here's Ben Krauhaus. Oh, that's a clever pass. Not the best of finishes from Olafella Olamola. Well, it's the right idea, it's clever from, from Krauhaus. This is the little bit of imagination that Andy Woodman was talking about, a little bit of creativity from, from one of those creative players. Olamola just doesn't catch hold of it. The idea is right, the execution wasn't the greatest. Olamola is uh, another one who knows the footballing landscape around this uh, part of the UK. Turned pro at Southampton. Uh, made a senior debut for them in a League Cup game. Now, big opportunity for Eastley with Quigley, and he takes it! Eastley into the lead with 64 minutes gone. A goal out of nothing for the Spitfires, who have made the most wonderful start under new manager Kelvin Davis. Bromley behind, having just had one of their better spells of the game. Delight for the Spitfires, who are going from strength to strength under their new manager. Well, we said it moments ago, this weather all of a sudden just changes things. McCallum wins the flick on, and the defenders are just not sure, not quite sure. But Quigley makes no mistake, low and hard, close to the goalkeeper, and he's unable to keep it out. Grant Smith will be disappointed with that. He'll feel that he should have, should have made a save, but take nothing away from the finish. As soon as it goes through, Quigley makes no mistake, smashes it low and hard, and fires easily into the lead. And it's going to pick up pace. So for defenders, this is a nightmare. And for the Bromley attackers, they ne now need to make sure that they use this to their advantage. Atten Garner's ball across. McCallum's there, and it's two. Well, it's way more than a new manager bounce. The Spitfires are up, up and away under Kelvin Davis. A 30th goal of the season in all competitions for Paul McCallum. Sealed with a kiss, too. The two strike partners have done the damage. Eastley could well be on their way to back-to-back -back wins now. Well, it's the Twin Towers up top. This time it's Paul McCallum. Who, there's a hint of offside here. You know, looking at when that ball comes across, is he slightly offside? He won't care because he does what he does best. Middle of the goal, gets a good head on it. It's to the side of Grant Smith. Grant Smith can't keep it out and gives Eastley a 2-0 lead. Really well-worked goal, but... This time, a good quality cross, one that McCallum can actually go and attack. And we've seen what damage he can do when he can go and attack the ball. Well, this new management team of Kelvin Davis and Danny Butterfield have done the business immediately. Less than a week in the job, these two. What can he do with it second time around? Cheek. 
that's not where they want Michael Cheek, Bromley. Charles's delivery, goalkeeper making it his, but not getting there, and off the line by Lee Hodson. A nervy moment for Eastleigh, they're not quite home and dried yet. Well, they are moments that you do not want. McDonnell just allows it to just squirm through his hands, almost leads to a Bromley goal. Not what you need when you're, when you're leading in a game, but he's lucky that he gets away with that one. The Spitfires are soaring thanks to their change of manager, Kelvin Davis, possessing a 100% record in his two games in charge, seeing off promotion chasing Bromley, the most impressive result so far. Goals from Scott Quigley and Paul McCallum doing the business for Eastleigh, who maybe themselves can mount a late challenge for the playoffs. Bromley, though, have got to dig themselves out of an increasingly deepening trough. It's been another disappointing performance from the Ravens. They are grounded. Spitfires flying. Another great day for Eastleigh, who are getting it right all of a sudden. They've beaten Bromley by two goals to nil here.